major things, of course, with congruence is teaching the criteria, or at least arriving at the criteria, and then using it. I will admit that um, in the materials I have provided some very specific transformational approaches, very formal transformational approaches to establishing these criteria, but I don't find those to be gratefully, great, greatly helpful to our students. They're almost too technical and, and a student would get easily lost in why we're doing it and what, how it works. So I've provided that because I think it's important to understand that there is a very formal nature to the deriving of side angle, side angle, side angle, and so on. But what I think is more important is the student understanding. And so sometimes we approach it a little more informally so that the big idea is grabbed and applied. And so I guess what I want to say is um, in activity one of GCO B8, I've created what I think is a, a wonderful way for students to, in an informal manner, do a mapping of their triangle onto another student's triangle uh, to establish congruences. Now I'm aware that one example or one mapping does not prove congruence. Um, the part of what I do in this experience is I have the map with a partner, then they group to four, map in the fours, then I kind of open it up to the group a little bit. I also walk around with one I make and kind of compare to, again, try and get that idea of bigger uh, responsibility than just one test. Now this is not a formal proof and it is not uh, the way that we would prove most things. But we will find that a huge majority of the students get this and then can use it immediately. Um, and so what I want to demonstrate for you is that the process of uh, deriving those criteria using that activity and just explain a few things to you about it. So the activity looks a little bit like this, at least the front page does. It has a number of angles and then some lengths and then it has the same angles but in a reversed or reflected manner. And you'll see that that makes it for a little bit more convenient. And then uh, the activity walks you through kind of just the discussion with students about the different criteria. The early ones, there's, we just kind of discuss them and then run along from them because they're so simple, like given one side or given one angle. But once we get to uh, a little bit more involved area, uh, we start to ask the students, this is create the triangle with an angle one and two. Uh, you want to copy one under the patty paper, copy two under the patty paper, and trace them out. It gives them kind of a diagram to give them a little feel for it. And then it says maybe try it a second time to see. The idea of trying it once and then twice is that idea that maybe we got lucky the first time or that it was a unique environment that worked, but it shouldn't have worked or so on. And so they go through, then there's the AA, and then they go through to the next one where they test uh, angle, side, angle, and so on. And all of the ones are there to be tested. Let me just show you how it works. It's uh, really quite nice um, how it builds and uh, helps students to get familiar with creating triangles based off of criteria. So let's just start with angle, angle here. It just says use angle one and angle two. So what I'm going to do is uh, grab a piece of patty paper. The students are starting to think that patty paper comes from you know, Mike Patterson, but uh, not quite. The patty paper, of course, is uh, named after the fact that it uh, is used in between two patties of hamburger to um, maintain that you can separate them easily. So let's make our triangle based off of angle one and angle two. And uh, just to show you how it works, one student basically copies an angle one and then they uh, label it. Always have them label it, of course. And then to ang make angle two, a very easy way to do it is to come on down here and find angle two here. There it is. Lay down the ruler and construct, well, I don't know if construct's the right word, but create angle two. And so I now have my angle one, angle two triangle made up of those. So I'm gonna put that aside and let's have another student come along and they say, well, all right, I'm going to make my angle one, angle two. And so they sit down and make their angle one. 
and they make their angle, well, they're still making their angle one, and they lay board one. They run down here to angle two, and they lay theirs down, and then say, oh, I've got to do it like this to close my triangle. And so they lay down their ruler, and scribe it, and get the two. Now, always label it, and, and the reason you always want it labeled is because then when we compare things, it's easy to see who matches who. So you can see that we both made a triangle at angle one and two, and, you, and actually the nice thing is you can say, oh yeah, you did it right, and oh yeah, you did it right. But then you can say, eh, these are not uh, congruent. And so we immediately talk about maybe the problem with this and how, how could we improve it so that it would force congruence. And of course, the discussion becomes maybe if we, you know, like locked in that a length there, we might get ourselves something uh, congruent. So let's do one that is a congruence, but maybe let's skip along in the uh, the examples here a little bit. Let's do uh, this one's kind of tricky to do, so let's do it. Let's do uh, a side and then two angles. So let's do C and then one and one. So we're going to create a side of C and then two angles, one and two. Actually, I said one and one last time, one and two. So a student comes along and says, I need first a side of C. And so they create their C. And then, uh, let's see, let me make sure the order. Side, angle one. So i got to run up to angle one now. And uh, I better label that too. That's my side of C. Now I create my angle one. A good habit, of course, always is create a nice long extended ray for that angle. So there's my angle one. So I have created a side and then an angle, and now my angle's got to be up here. Not over here, because that would be angle, side, angle. I want side, angle, angle. Now I need my angle two. The way you do this, it's kind of tricky, which makes it more interesting, I think, is you've got to place angle 2 along uh, that um, along that ray. Do you see how my angle 2 is up in that corner? And I'm going to keep adjusting it until C is exactly where it needs to be, right there. Do you see how C is uh, now exactly the proper length. So this is the location I want to create my angle to, or I would have to, ha I have to create it there because I need to close my triangle, and there's my angle to. So I created a triangle of, let's see here, a side angle angle. So now I'm interested, well, if I created, uh, if I started, you know, just uh, making it again, would I get the same answer? Could I make a different answer? So let's start with C. And purposely, I'll kind of maybe go a different way around my triangle. Last time I went C, and then I went angle one, and then two. So I'm going to go one going the other way. So I'll use this angle one down here. And I will create, because you never know, students may do it. Uh, they have to do it in the same order, but you know, you can go different ways around the triangle or position them a little bit differently. So I'm going to put my 1 there. And again, I'm going to close this out using my angle 2. Now, the way I have to use angle 2 is there's my, uh, there's my nice angle 2. But I don't want to create it there because my C would not be fully used. So I keep sliding it until I find that that angle 2 would actually close the triangle. I lay it down there and create angle two. And again, let's do a little comparison here. I've created, uh, oh, see there, they're, I kind of created them different. I can't, I can't currently put them on top of each other. It doesn't seem to be working, but then I realized, wait a minute, one was kind of a reflection of the other. So isn't that cool? By flipping the paper, I'm kind of establishing that idea of mapping one onto the other, and bada boom, there they are on top of each other. Maybe just the last thing to describe, of course, one of these is uh, a little trickier than the others. Let's find the one that is a little more interesting, which is an angle side-side. Ah, wonderful. And, of course, 
I create uh, an environment where when you create the angle side side, more than one answer is possible. This one doesn't always pop because sometimes every kid makes it the same. And so I do a second one and hope that uh, it pops the second time. And if it doesn't, I usually then create one and walk around and kind of say, well, wait a minute, I got something different. It's a great, great way to establish the criteria and to use that idea of mapping one onto another. And so, oh, these didn't work, but even though you and I made ours in a different time or order or a different place, I was able to map mine onto yours. A wonderful experience for establishing the criteria using a informal transformational approach.